You need copper and you want tridents, so you need a drown farm. But you don't want to build a drown farm out in the ocean. They're difficult, the water's deep, and you don't swim so well. But fear not, I'm going to show you a super simple drowned copper trident farm for Minecraft 117 and above that is going to get you loads of copper and tridents fast. Don't you go anywhere. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode from me, Avamance, in my Minecraft 117 farm tutorial series. Today, we are doing a drown farm. We are going for tridents, copper, nautilus shells and all that jazz. But the ocean is such a pain to build in. You've got to get right out there, place lily pads and you've got to go down deep and you've got to do all sorts of stuff to stop yourself from drowning and avoid the drowns as well. No, no, I want to do it a different way. Did you know that the spawn rates of drowned in river biomes are even better than they are in the ocean? So guess what? We're gonna do a drowned farm in this river biome. And this one is properly super simple. So the first thing you need to do is find a decent sized river biome. Now that's actually the trickiest part of this farm. And that's because you need a bit of river biome that is at least nine by nine square and ideally 11 by 11. I'm just gonna bring up my F3 screen and you can see I'm in the forest even though I'm over the river. So it's a little bit tricky. I'm now in the river biome and you just need to mark out to make sure all of it is river. Let's do that. And I can't actually get an 11 by 11 square in this bit. It's amazing. There's so much forest just encroaches it, but just a little bit up the river, I did find one and here we go. Absolutely everything you need for this farm is inside this chest. Take a screenshot, pause the video, do whatever it is you need to do to get those items. That is plenty. These are temporary blocks. Use wool, use whatever you like. These are just structural blocks. You may or may not need them depending on what happens in the nether. This is a really good sword. This is ideal, but any sword would actually do. You are gonna need this square of river biome that is 11 blocks by 11 blocks. You can see, if I bring up my debug screen with F3, I'm looking at the surface of the water being Y62. And on the left hand side, it says Y63, that's the position of your feet. Come up one with a temporary block, and then with a glass block, come up another one. And then what I want you to do is I want you to fill in this entire area with glass. So you've got an 11 by 11 square completely made out of glass. Then choose one of the edges of your square. It doesn't matter which one, but it's probably a good idea if it's poking out over water. So I'm gonna go for this and bring in a row of obsidian, the entire length of it like this until you get to the end. So that should be 11 pieces of obsidian like that. And then get another temporary block and in the middle, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, come out, one, two, and then place another glass block right on that one like that. Then come to the other side, remove those temporary blocks. Get yourself a turtle leg, place the turtle leg on that glass block, get yourself a trap door, place the trap door on that block, jump across, one on that block, jump back again and flap those down. That is gonna be our drown bait. We then need to enclose our platform. And this is quite simple. Get yourself a temporary block right there, just at the edge of the obsidian, but not on the obsidian. Place a glass block. Doesn't have to be glass. This could be any block you want. I'm using glass just because I want to be able to see into it. And I wanna build myself a four high wall all the way around this platform. So this is a 13 by 13 horseshoe that is four blocks high. So it should look something like that. Then grab yourself some more obsidian, place an obsidian block just there, bounce yourself up to there. So you've got a three high obsidian wall right there. Put yourself another block of glass, then get another obsidian block all the way across and complete this obsidian portal. This is where we're gonna go through to the nether. But before you do, lob some carpet on top of these obsidian blocks. These are spawnable and you just don't want that. Now you need to know what the center of this portal is. So take a look at this block right here, the one that's got the trap door attached to it. Bring up your debug screen and see what the dimensions of that block are. So we can see this is a targeted block of minus 1854, 64, 850. Don't go through your portal until you've got those dimensions, those coordinates. Now you can light your portal and you can go through it. You'll notice that the portal that's generated here is just the standard size portal. Naturally generated portals will never be bigger than this size. 
Again, bring up your debug screen and target one of these two blocks here. You'll notice that that says minus 227 69 123. Now that is no good. You need a portal that is going to pair up with the portal on the other side. So anything that goes through them doesn't get confused with any other portals. Otherwise, you're going to have drowned roaming around the nether all over the place, or you're going to have pigmen roaming around your world, and you don't want either of those things. So take the coordinates that you took for the overworld portal, minus 1854 and 850 in my case for the X and the Z, and divide them by 8. Now in my case, that made the coordinates 231.75, So round those, it's 232, 64, And I have marked that block here with some obsidian. I'm now gonna make myself another nether portal, just a normal sized nether portal like this. And that is gonna be the one that we pair up with the one on the other side. If you then come and destroy this other portal, get rid of it because it's only gonna interfere. As a result of that, the other portal on the overworld is now waiting to be matched up with something. We're gonna match it up with this one by lighting this up and moving right through it. And as a result, you can see we come out on our platform, which is exactly what we want. Now, depending on where your portal is now will depend on how you do this. Because mine is within this netherrack, I'm gonna be able to build a trench. If yours is open, you need to build up a trench using blocks. I'm just gonna dig one out. And I'm gonna dig a trench that is six blocks across, two blocks wide, and three blocks deep. This is our kill zone. Inside your three deep trench, come to the wall opposite the nether portal and dig yourself a two high room that goes back four blocks. That's three and four. And leaving one block in the ceiling, dig out another row like this. So you've got a three high room right next to it, but a two high wall bit that you have to pass under. If this is an open space for you, then build this structure up with other blocks. Doesn't matter what the blocks are, you just need to build it up so you've got the same shape as I've got. I'm quite fortunate that I'm able to dig this bit out. Choose one of the walls in your room and dig yourself out a three by two hole and then line it with obsidian because we are making another nether portal that we can go in and out of. We can't go in and out of the other portal because that's where the drowned are gonna come in and out of. And you're just then gonna end up drowned dinner and that's not what you want. Pull up your F3 screen and see what the bottom of this block is. Minus 225, 61, 106. That's really important. We are gonna to need to match that up with a portal in the overworld to make sure they are paired as well and there is no confusion coming in and out of your farm. Now just light it up, walk through it, and you should come out fairly close to your farm. Right, okay, so this is the problem. We have now come through this portal, which is why we've got to match it with another one. That short distance in the nether takes us all the way over here to this nether portal. Let's light this up. This should bring us out exactly into our small room so we can carry on with that part of the farm. Yes, it does. That's perfect. Let's crack on. I'm just enclosing this chamber now so nothing else can wander in. I'll put a roof and a wall there. I'm going to grab a trapdoor there, a trapdoor there, and I'm going to flap them down. And then directly opposite, a trapdoor there, a trapdoor there, and I'm going to flap them down. I'm then going to open up those two spaces there. I'm gonna grab a turtle egg, I'm gonna place it on one of these two blocks. Doesn't matter which one you place it on. I'm then gonna get another two trap doors and I'm gonna place them there and there and I'm gonna flap those up. Those trap doors are gonna allow these drowned to wander in, but they'll just chill on that portal. That turtle egg is gonna make them walk straight through and fall into our trap. Now come through to the side in your room and place a double chest directly underneath this wall. Then grab yourself a hopper, put a hopper into the back of two parts of that chest, then shift click hoppers all the way across so you have got one, two, three, four, five, six by two space there. Then we're gonna put slabs on top of that. I'm using deep slate because we're in 117 and everybody's using deep slate, right? And then a trap door on the underside of that wall, exactly like that. That allows you to get right in here but none of those drowned can actually see you, especially those that are wielding tridents. You're gonna get XP through that hole, you're gonna get drops through those hoppers, it's gonna be a fest. 
Now feel free to decorate this room up however you would like. Line it up with nether stuff, make it deep slaty. I don't care, this is yours to design the way you want to. So come back inside your farm because we've got just a little bit more building to do before it actually works. There's not many blocks left to place. Come to the end of your chamber that's opposite the nether portal and make a platform one higher than the current floor all the way across that is three deep just like that then get yourself scaffolding go one two three and climb up so you can stand on this wall break up that scaffolding you're not going to need that anymore and then place a water bucket on every one of these blocks right here you should see that water running all the way to the nether portal but not going into it and breaking it that's perfect that's just going to speed things up it's not essential but it works really quite well we are then going to place signs by shift clicking signs all the way across the entire width of this chamber right across the top so we've got an 11 by 11 grid of signs you can also use gates but signs use fewer blocks they're cheaper from a resource perspective so maybe use signs it's a lot easier it doesn't matter if you write on them it makes no difference whatsoever Come to one of the corners of your farm, doesn't matter which one, and you're gonna place 90 scaffolding blocks, which is gonna take you up to Y154. The scaffolding block that I am standing on right now is on Y154. The scaffolding block that I am standing on is on Y154. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get myself a slab and I'm gonna place it on top of that scaffold. I'm then gonna look over and I'm gonna find which direction the glass wall is. And I'm gonna follow this 13 by 13 square along with these slabs. So we're kind of rimming and mirroring that glass square right underneath us. Once I've done that 13 by 13 square up in the air, I'm gonna put some temporary blocks down. I'm using dirt, you can use whatever temporary block you like. And I'm gonna fill in that underneath the level of those slabs. I'm covering those temporary blocks with a sheet of water source blocks. Make sure you don't place any buckets of water onto those slabs, otherwise you're gonna get an overflow. Then take away those temporary blocks so the water flows down and give the thing a lid. These need to be solid blocks. I'm using Deep Slate because of Minecraft 117. You can use whatever solid block you would prefer. I then put a lip of bottom slabs around those solid blocks just to keep the light from going in that little gap put some torches or lanterns on top of those solid blocks to stop spawns and then create a shield to stop the light getting into my water column. I go out 10 slabs from that lower level of slabs in the north, south, east and west direction and connect those up so I've got a diamond shape that keeps out all of that light. Now all we've got left to do is make an AFK platform. Now to do this, just nick out the corner there where you've had your scaffolding before and pop a couple of extra scaffolds in there. Replace that one, and you need to send this scaffolding up to Y190. So that is an extra 36 scaffoldings, including the two that I've just put on there. So the scaffolding that I am standing on now is on Y190, and we're gonna make ourselves just a little AFK point that's more or less in the center of our square down there. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly in the center, as long as it's more or less in the center. So I'm going to place myself a glass block there and I'm just going to come across one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to turn and go one, two, three, four, five, and six. And I'm then just going to make myself a little three by three platform out of glass like that. And I'm then going to put myself a bit of a roof on that as well just to protect myself from any phantoms that may come along during the night time because night time is when this farm works at its best. And I'll basically hang here until all the drowns fall in. Okay, I'm a minor plank. I made the glass wall around this farm one block too low. So add another row of glass blocks all the way around the top of this farm. Exactly like this. My apologies, just add this glass block on. It is an absolute doddle to do that. I've then created myself a little stairway made out of glass blocks so they're not spawnable that go up to that scaffolding which means I can get all the way up to the top to my AFK spot whenever I want and when I want to start killing stuff I can run to my nether portal. All I'm going to do now is remove those temporary blocks from underneath the farm. We don't need those anymore at all and I'm going to go up to the top and have a bit of an AFK session. I'm going to AFK for one hour, just one hour and we're going to see how much we can get at the other end in the nether. Let's go. 
And as you stand at the top there, AFK and the Drowned are going to form in the water column. They will spawn in in any too high water block in any Y value in a river biome. It's not like the ocean where they have to be under Y57. As a result, you get far more Drowned spawning. The flat is flowing water pushes the Drowned down into your capture chamber. They get flowed into that nether portal and they will be waiting for me on the other side when I finish my AFK session. I've actually decided to make it 30 minutes. So what if we get down there? We need to double to get our early rates. Let's go and have a look. Now for best effect with this farm, your sword should look something like this. Looting three, sweeping edge, smite five, mending and unbreaking three. That is perfect. You are gonna be killing loads of drown very fast and getting lots of drops with that. However, if you've just got a normal sword, you could use that too. I've also reduced my XP to absolute zero to show you how effective this farm can be as an XP farm too. Right, let's get ourselves through the portal and see what we've got waiting for us on the other side. I'm expecting there to be quite a number of drowns sitting inside this thing. Yes, there is, you can see, look, they're all wandering around there. It is really, really noisy. Have we got anything? We've already got some stuff come through as a result of entity cramming, which is insane if you think about it. These drowns have already crammed themselves in so much after 30 minutes that they've killed each other through entity cramming. That is just bonkers. Now this bit is really simple. You've just got to whack them. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and I'm going to bash these things proper hard and see what we can't get. I've already got eight levels of experience. I've only hit them a few times. Keep going and you should end up with a decent number of drops inside. Oh, there's one left. There we go. That XP is still flowing into me. This is half an hour of AFK in. The XP is still coming. We've got 17, we've got 18. It's just flowing into, I've got no idea when it's gonna stop. Actually, genuinely not a clue. There we go, nearly 20 levels of experience. Stuff is still gonna be pouring through these, I imagine. And in here, we have got, stuff is coming in. We've got a trident already. We've got a copper ingot. We've got a Nautilus shell there as a result of all that cramming and lots and lots of rotten flesh and a little bit of raw salmon because fish are going to be spawning in that water column as well and when they drop through the bottom the water will flush them into the portal drop them in this place and they will also be available for you to be able to take it's also worth mentioning that i picked up myself four copper ingots 27 rotten flesh and another trident as well as three nautilus shells because i was standing close and picked them up they didn't go into the collection system so i got them directly that is extra loot in just 30 minutes so i've tidied the chest up now and all together we have got just over four stacks of rotten flesh a fishing rod four nautilus shells three tridents 17 copper ingots and eight raw salmon in 30 minutes this farm is seriously effective and then you can go and AFK for a little bit longer and see how much more you can get. I hope you've enjoyed this drowned farm tutorials. You're going to be able to get loads and loads of tridents. You're going to be able to get loads and loads of copper, loads and loads of nautilus shells plus other stuff as well. It's very effective and I'm glad I'm in creative mode right now because that creeper is looking right at me. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying them and I will keep on making. Also, if you're not done already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.